Okay, let's take a look at example 331 uh, from the homework set. And we're being asked to solve for V0 in this circuit using nodal analysis. So let's apply our formal method. First we'll pick our ground, volt, our ground node. Okay, And often we end up picking the bottom, but not always. It works out really good in this particular instance because um, the voltage that we're being asked to find, if it's connected to the ground, it'll make the uh, arithmetic that much easier. Um, now let's uh, label and assign node voltages. So we'll call this one V1, V2, and V3. And then uh, we'll also assign current directions. Okay, and I can pick all of them arbitrarily. This is the only one where it makes sense to kind of think it through and pick the same uh, direction as the uh, voltage that we're given. Okay, and now uh, we're ready to start thinking about applying uh, KCL at each of the nodes. However, we're going to run into a problem because the uh, because this branch of the circuit cannot be solved um, using KCL. We have no way of describing the current through here because there's no resistor value. Um, so what we'll do is we'll use the idea of a super node, and a super node essentially says that you can put your you can sort of put a blob anywhere over the circuit and treat that blob like it's a node um, and applies to uh, the KCL rules. Uh, therefore, the sum of the currents uh, entering and leaving a node will equal zero. Okay, so what we need to do is draw a line, uh, draw a closed loop that will uh, enclose this branch entirely and it will only cross through uh, branches whose uh, current we know that we can calculate. Okay, so I'll start up here and I'll start drawing my little uh, super node. And I'm avoiding going through that branch. I know this current, so I can pass through this one. And here I have to make a choice. See, I can't, I actually don't know this current either. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of loop up and avoid it. Okay, and then I'll come up and close the loop. And that's going to be my super node. So now let's um, uh, apply, well, let's look at the currents going in and out of that node. Okay, so here we have a current going this way here we have a current going this way here we have a current going that way and here we have a current going that way and that's all of the um, current flowing through that node so um, now we can apply KCL at the node. Okay, so let's apply KCL at our super node. And we'll say that currents leaving the node are positive. So uh, our first one is going to be V1 minus 0 divided by 1K. Uh, this is a plus leaving the node uh, and this is going to be V1 minus V2 because V1 is at a higher potential over 2k that's our resistor there and then this one is entering the node so we'll put a minus sign in front and V2 is at a higher potential than V3 because of the current that we've chosen so V2 minus V3 over 1k 
and then finally we have this current that's leaving the node and that's going to be V3 minus 0 because the polarity tells us that this is at a higher potential than ground so V3 over 1k and all of this equals 0 okay so now let's um, simplify and reduce this equation so this will be 2v1 plus v1 minus v2 minus 2v2 plus v oops, plus 2v3 plus 2v3 equals 0. And now I'll combine the terms here. Those are my only v1, so I get 3v1. And here are my uh, V2's, so I'm going to get minus 3 V3 and then plus 4 V3 equals 0. Now the nice thing that you'll discover about any or most of these circuits with supernodes is that they actually are extremely simple to solve because there's an auxiliary equation that falls out of the supernode that allows us to uh, reduce the equation. And that is uh, going to be uh, solving the uh, voltage difference between V1 and V3, or whatever voltage, node voltages are between the branch that you um, had to cause the, create the super node for. So here we've got, um, because of the battery here, V1 is at a higher potential. So we have the equation auxiliary equation that you always get with a supernode um, that says V1 minus V2 or I'm sorry V3 is equal to uh, 12 volts okay and uh, we can then rewrite that into V1 equals 12 plus V3 and that'll allow us to plug it uh, back into this equation in a moment. Um, we also have another auxiliary equation from this circuit and that's at V2. Right? We know what V2 is. V2 has to be negative 6 volts because of the polarity here. So V2 equals negative 6 volts. And so V2 is known and we can rewrite the equation here in terms of V1. Um, so first let's plug in to this equation the idea that V2 equals negative 6 volts. When you do that you'll get uh, 3V1 minus, uh, plus 4V3 equals 18, negative 18. And then we'll plug in the idea of V1 being equal to 12 plus V3 from our other auxiliary equation. And what will fall out of this is um, 7V3 is equal to negative uh, 54. So V3 then equals negative 7.7 .7 volts. And uh, of course last but not least uh, we also know that V3 is equal to V0. Okay, So we've solved uh, this problem